I assume a lot of drumsticks were broken uh, while recording that first half. Oh, of hell the album. yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper and if this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. One of the best kept secrets uh, of extreme metal has to be mass worship. Their first album was really cool but kind of flew under the radar um, and now the second album is out so I just had to call up the band and learn all about it. <laughs> Hi Fred, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, let's just go straight into it. Your second album, when we're recording this, uh, is coming out in just a few days. Um, that must be extremely exciting, if not in the least, because I think you'll agree with me that the first album flew a little under the radar. Uh, and, there were, and obviously COVID timing didn't help with an album coming out in 2019. <laughs> um, is that right? You know. It, Mass worship has been a bit of a, you know, best kept secret in extreme metal. And I think you'd like to see that change. Yeah, definitely. That's how we feel about it as well. Um, I mean, we, we wrote that record in different times. We had a different lineup. Uh, we're immensely proud of it, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think we really set the, the path forward for this band with that record and really defined that core, core darkness and heaviness that is, that is really unique to what we're doing right now. Uh, but with that said, with this new record, it's new times, we have a new lineup, uh, we can really spread our wings a bit further and, and try some new stuff and really enhance some of the elements that we really want to do collectively as a band, which is most primarily the melodic side of the band, yeah. uh, but also the progressive side of the band. We want it to be, you know, we, we, we want to try new things and we want to, you know, define, define a new new way of doing things and you know try try different things essentially and we we uh -huh. i think we really succeeded with that the way i experienced that album as a listener was you know i mean first and foremost like you guys hit us in the face over and over and over again in the first like four or five songs like say four and a half songs maybe um and as a listener i feel like i'm going through this and it, I, I don't know what's going on. There's chaos all around me. There's no way for me to get oriented. And then all of a sudden there's halfway through, I don't want to spoil too much of the album for people that haven't listened to it, but all of a sudden there's this moment of calmness and, and it almost kind of like feels like a rebirth with uh, Unholy Mass. And then I find the second half of the album is, def is really where um, you guys embrace that melodic side, maybe even a little more. And it almost feels like I was in chaos and darkness, I somehow found a, an element of, of, of calm. I got rebirthed and all of a sudden I'm on a whole different mission. Is, is that what you were trying to do or is this just my weird experience of listening to the album? No, it, it, and it's always it's always super interesting to hear how people interpret it. And, uh, and I had a chat with another guy just a couple of days ago and he, he see it as like a downward spiral, essentially the whole, the whole thing. But, and I and I think I kind of agree with that, but I, I definitely agree with that from a, from a like musical standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the the second side of the album is it's definitely more melodic. It's much more epic. Oh, yeah. uh, and it really like it really widens out in a way. Uh, but to me, that's that's just another another way to express heaviness, you know, right. like it doesn't have to be. Uh, a tank running over you constantly like that's that's also a nice type of heaviness of course but yeah. i think that the the later side of this record really presents some of those other ways you can introduce heaviness to, yes. to the listener besides the spokesperson of the band uh you were also the drummer of the band um yeah. In the second half, uh, you know, not just the songs get more epic, but also, um, at least for me, as as I, I'm not a drummer, but uh, for me, it sounds like you know the uh, the second half for you is might be even more might be more challenging to play as well, and you uh, showcase your skills definitely more. Where I find in the first half, it's just you're beating a war drum, and and I don't yeah. even <laughs> I don't 
I assume a lot of drumsticks were broken uh, while recording that first half. Oh, of hell the album. yeah. Uh, hell it's, yeah, yeah definitely. Especially like Specular Void, the, the, the opening album, like it, it legit sounds like there's a war drum beating and it's it's not stopping. Um, uh, is that... Um, was was that like intentional and almost like as you know this is like there's something's brewing uh, it's, it's it's hard to say really i mean and and from from my perspective as a drummer it's yeah. it's probably a bit different because things can be like i mean i'm i'm very comfortable playing messy stuff with my hands right and and i think that's that's the kind of stuff you hear on the second half but that's that's not you know technically hard for me to do the, the technically hard stuff for me is the feet because i'm not really you know i'm i'm i grew up playing punk mainly and crust punk right, right, and, you know, right stuff like that so i'm not not that much of a double kick drummer and i really really had to learn being that in this band so so that's really the the technical stuff for yeah, me yeah, is yeah, the yeah, feet yeah. so it's like kind of ironic in that sense but i totally see what you're saying it's it's more um progressive in terms of uh, sure. you know different ways like it's it's not traditional metal drumming on on the second half uh, yeah, yeah, of the yeah, record yeah. for sure now that you mentioned it's not necessarily traditional metal drumming nothing uh, mass worship is one of those bands especially on this album where um everything all the elements feel very familiar but at the same time it's all different anyway um and when you mentioned crust punk, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of crust punk influences into this album, um, and there's in most of the songs there's this juxtaposition between the riffing and growling, but then the the solos and certain melodies that we hear at the same time. That makes you guys a very complex and layered band. For some, for at the same time, which is weird, it's you're a very stripped down band and raw band, but at the same time very layered and complex. That means that you can also fit in with a ton of different genres and people. Yeah. But that also means that you're never quite the right fit. Is that something yeah. that you sometimes struggle with, where you, you, you never really seem to fit into what people are looking for or, or trying to expect from you? Yeah, and I, but I think I like it. You know, yeah. I like that people have a hard time really defining what it is we're doing. Yeah, it's and, impossible to and label putting it in, into a genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it is, and and I really love that. I, I take it as the greatest compliment because I'm I'm just trying, you know, to to communicate my my inner emotions and my my view of the world through music, essentially. And yeah, yeah. I don't really care about the genre. Like I, I don't care about the rules. I don't care about you know anything specific like that. It's just whatever feels natural to me. That's that's what's going to come out essentially um so so yeah we we kind of thrive in that but like you point out it's i mean it's it's a hard reality for band nowadays to to stand out like right. and and to really get attention because there's so many fucking bands but uh and and for that sake i think it might help to be easy to put in a genre this is you know a mishubia right. clone or this is uh, entombed clone or whatever uh so in the in the short term that's probably you know good for a band but i would i would argue that in the long term it's much better to be a band that is doing their own shit you know we're not trying to copy anyone we're just trying to do our own thing here and i think it's just it's just going to take a bit longer for people to get it and and that's really the downside and the hard reality of it but I'm yeah. I'm completely fine with that. We talked about like how how I interpreted the album from a musical perspective, and you mentioned you know some people have shared like it feels a bit like the listener is going or the band is going through a downward spiral. Um, these emotions and kind of like that, almost like that 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 quest to find something or trying to escape from something and dealing with a lot of emotions around you. Um, those are also elements that you guys have brought to life in your music videos where, um, uh, you know, at times we follow a wanderer who seems to be, you know, either underrun from or running towards something. Uh, my deal with, with 
with betrayal at certain points as well or 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 coming to terms that it's impossible to escape your fate um again my interpretations as a viewer what is the story that you were that you that you want to tell uh with these videos and with uh, with the lyrics of the album yeah i mean it's it's all about existentialism in general and i mean even though we have death influences and stuff we're, we're not a gore band we're not right. talking about you know the, the typical gore kind of stuff it's more philosophical in a sense and it's it's really just about the search for meaning in a seemingly meaningless existence generally and i mean portal tombs the, the title of the album and and all the the imagery and and the videos and everything is just going straight into that and it's about mm -hmm. facing your fears facing death and trying to see see life from a new perspective beyond you know beyond the end essentially and and see new beginnings in in death essentially uh so that's that's really especially the videos that's that's really what we're trying to deal with but then to me it's like from you know a creative standpoint it's it's the most important part is just to try to awaken feelings that people really didn't know that they had yeah. you know like kind of evoke new emotions to people uh, and not so much give them you know a prepackaged like he, here's happiness listen to right. this and you'll feel x you know yeah, like yeah. we're we're just trying to be like i know that everyone is feeling this in a certain way i know that i can you know shake in your your existence a tiny bit to just awaken some some slumbering emotions underneath Well, and then obviously, you know, to awaken those emotions, no better way for a band, especially a band that is as raw uh, as you guys and as influenced by crust punk to convey that message in a live setting. Um, this is a like mass worship plays music that needs to be played live and preferably in a very dark <laughs> venue um, where, you know, people can sweat and move a lot. Um, I know that yeah. things are still different every day and it's hard to make a lot of plans uh here in north america uh touring in the states is, is depending on which state you are is fully back here up here in canada uh tours are starting to be planned again and announced again um what's what's next for you guys because I, I can only imagine that you want to take this on the road as soon as possible yeah and that, i mean that was that was the whole intention from the very beginning with this band was to just create music and tour our asses out essentially mm -hmm. just because we have that you know yeah. we have our roots in diy culture and you know touring with punk bands and stuff like that so th that was the whole intention but yeah you, as you point out the world is changing we don't really know what's going to happen and we just have to adjust to that reality um uh, we have we have some tours planned we have some festivals planned as well in sweden uh we'll see what happens we're just keeping our fingers crossed hopefully we can play uh but really we're just waiting for things to you know get get back to some sort of normality or to the new normal whatever yeah. that may be so that we can get out and play as much as possible that's really what we want to do uh, that's yeah that, like you point out that's that's where we live <laughs> Fred, I want to thank you for your time. I know we had only a little bit of time today, but thank you so much for your time. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm excited for you guys to release this new album. And uh, just looking at the traction and, and, and how, you know, the label is supporting you guys, I think uh, uh, a lot more people are going to be introduced to your music than uh, with the first album. So uh, I wish you all the best with this release cycle. Yeah, thank you so much. I truly appreciate your time. Amazing. Thank you. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.